You know, I've been trying to think of a new intro for uh, like the past few videos and everything that I've done, like I've run through a bunch of different ones, like a ton, and they all feel really, really weird. So I, I don't know really what to do as an intro anymore. I feel like, hey Josh, with like a little peace symbol, it's kind of getting old. Yo, it's Josh, that seems like it probably should have died in the 90s. Uh, yeah, okay, so, um, Super hard to drive headphones. Super, super hard to drive headphones. The Hyphman HE6. Now, a bit of a backstory on this sort of headphone, um, and actually the amp I used to power it with, which if anybody's curious, was the uh, Audio GD NFV1 amp. I bought that amplifier specifically so that I could power anything and everything, including this, in all of its glory, uh, anything and everything that would show up to the channel that I would want to review, and I didn't want anybody to to really have a, an issue with not having enough power to power headphones. Now, this is one of those headphones that's, depending on who you talk to, you're gonna get a lot of different answers on what you need to power this headphone. Um, some people have actually told me that you basically essentially have to have a 50 watt speaker amplifier to power these properly. I haven't tried them on a speaker amplifier. There is like a little kit that you can get that converts the speaker binding post output to a headphone uh, compatible, um, port basically that you can actually run these off of a speaker amplifier. Now, while I haven't tried them on that, uh, from Hyphenman's website themselves, sorry, I left my phone over, the, over uh, at the desk here. So, oh, no, that's Google Docs. Don't want that, I want Google. So it says a bunch of complimentary things about it, of course. It says with a sensitivity level of 83.5 decibels, the HE6 must be paired with a headphone amplifier of comparable quality, such as the Hyphenman EF5, which delivers two watts per channel. Uh, it also says uh, the HE, I'm sorry, the EF6 is a headphone amplifier that serves five watts per channel at 50 ohms. I'm assuming their two watts per channel for their other thing was 50 ohms as well. Now they don't actually sell those amplifiers anymore. I couldn't see, I couldn't seem to find them on their website um, except for the EF6, but that was discontinued. So for all the people saying that you need a, like a crazy amplifier to power them. I think that's a little bit overhyped. I, I don't really think they need a, such a ridiculous amplifier to where you absolutely have to power them off of a speaker amplifier. I just don't think that's true. Um, you do want a powerful amplifier. Now just for reference, the NFB1 amp with like six uh, XXs, which are fairly kind of mediumly hard to drive headphones. Out of 63 on high gain on that one amp, I listen anywhere between 30 to 45 from a loud song to a quiet song would be that 45 level. On the HE6, I listen anywhere from between 40 to about 60, even up to 63 on those really quiet songs. So I could actually max out that uh, amplifier on really quiet songs, but generally I'm sticking between 40 and 50. That's generally where I tended to listen to the HE6. So that's kind of where the testing was. That's generally how much power it needed. It's a lot, but it's actually not as ridiculous as I think some people like to make it out to be. Um, that being said, I haven't tried some of those recommended things, but it's not my pair of headphones. Um, actually, as you can see, they were modified by the owner. Um, I don't actually have the backing foam inside them. Uh, so I don't know how they sound with that. Uh, I have to review this headphone as it is in front of me and I do the best with what I can. Okay, so now that that very long introduction uh, about uh, power and what you actually need to power this thing is over, let's go ahead and get into the general review of this headphone, starting with sound and an overall impression of the sound. So if you've heard HE4XXs, that'll get you about 95% of this thing's t uh, total sound quality. And I know there's gonna be a lot of people who are like, screw you, no way. Um, yeah, I mean, the it's basically an HE4XX, if you've heard that, turned up to 11. Um, it's kind of a more extreme, a little bit brighter, not really more bassy, actually it's cleaner in the bass response, I think it's better and a tighter bass response than the 4XX. But generally speaking, the sound signature is approximately pretty close to one another. Uh, detail, obviously, there, there are a few things that the HE6 definitely edges out the 4XX, and I am, basing this off of memory. I didn't do a direct comparison, so keep that in mind. It's better imaging, slightly better sound stage, uh, a little bit more detail, a little bit sharper in the high end, um, and a little bit brighter from what I can remember as well. And I think the six is definitely a better headphone than the four as an overall package, um, but I do have some caveats on whether or not it's a, a good buy as a headphone itself. Um, and if you want that kind of sound signature that this offers, but you don't want to pay nearly the 1300 bucks that these come in if you want to buy them new. Uh, the 4XX is going to be a great option 
And uh, in my opinion, it's a little more, more comfortable too because those pads suck. And you can actually, uh, you know, drive the, the headphone off of uh, generally any good amplifier, unlike that which is nice. Okay, so I'm tackling treble first because I'm actually the most disappointed in the treble of all the other frequencies. Um, not a whole lot of resolution up there. I'd never considered the 4XX to be a particularly resolving headphone. Um, I don't really consider this to be, the 6 to be a resolving headphone either. I think the 1990s are more resolving, the LX is more resolving, the, even something um, lower, lower end, like the HD6XX, I think has better resolved highs than the Hyphman HE6 does. And I thought at first this might be a power issue, but I listened to the same song on even really low power amps, uh, well, at least low power for this being the Liquid Spark, and I was having the same treble issues, or the, not really issues necessarily, but I was getting the same results in treble from the Spark to the Jotunheim, to the one amp. And even on the THX AAA 789, I was not really getting the best results with the treble, so I think that's more of a headphone thing than the actual amplification thing. Uh, the biggest changes I noticed with lower amplification was usually bass development, uh, imaging and sound state development was a little bit looser, not quite as tight, and bass wasn't nearly to the level of, not necessarily amount, but definitely did not have the same refinement with a low power amp compared to a higher powered amp. So power definitely helps it out a lot. And to, and to wrap up the treble before we get into mid-range, uh, there were a couple instrument examples that I have to kind of give you an idea of where I felt like the treble issues lied. Violin was absolutely excellent. I felt that it had good development, good, uh, good isolation with the treble, good imaging with the treble. Um, and good resolution there. But when you went into something that was in the frequency spectrum of let's say a trumpet, for example, trumpet came across very forward, very bright, and, and in my opinion, to my ears, not very pleasant to listen to, a lack of sharpness, uh, a boost in loudness, um, and it just kind of a little bit of disappointing performance there. Now, when we go into the mid-range, the mid-range is not totally impressive for me, but it's not unimpressive either. Um, it has really good tonality. I think female vocals and going into that uh, that upper limit of, you know, anywhere between, I don't know, 1,000 to 3,000 hertz area is going to be a little bit reduced to where I would have liked to have seen it. And female vocals that get in that area seem a little bit thin to me. Below that, it seemed to be okay, didn't seem to be a problem. Um, but S's didn't really develop as, as kind of crystalline as I would have liked or as clean as I would have liked. Uh, but when you're talking about male vocals, the bulk of even female vocals, it wasn't a problem below that 1000 hertz area. And, and below that 1000 hertz area, everything seemed to develop very nicely. You had a good amount of detail, nice forwardness, good separation, although not spectacular. We'll talk more about that in the imaging and soundstage section. Now the bass performance is kind of interesting. So it's not an inherently super warm sounding headphone, even though it is. And I don't really know how to describe this, but the bass is so clean. It's actually really impressive. It's impressive for a specific reason, but it's not impressive in a way that I would call like a bassy headphone impressive, like an LCD 2C. That's impressive because it has a lot of bass in it and it maintains the integrity of the bass very well, despite having so much. This headphone is impressive for a different reason. Uh, the, the frequency response is very flat through the sub bass and the mid bass, but the impressive part about the bass in this headphone is how clean it sounds and how you can have so much bass without it feeling like a super bassy headphone when you're listening to it. It's punchy and it gives uh, music like orchestral music a very good kind of uh, body and development to them. You feel like the impact of the orchestra, you feel like the power of the orchestra rather than just the finite details like you would get with a headphone like a, a Stax headphone, where you're gonna be listening to an entire orchestra. Yes, it's gonna have far superior imaging and soundstage capabilities than this, but it lacks that real low end to give you that very powerful sound that, uh, that I really do enjoy. Now I do like Stax, but for different reasons, but the way that this develops bass is something that I haven't seen on too many headphones and this seems to do very, very well. Now an important notice for that is I am using the stock pads. I do know that uh, pad modifications are pretty popular on this headphone. Um, I don't have any recommendations because I know that these pads are kind of a pain to get off so I didn't want to risk breaking it because this is my pair of headphones. And I'm not sure how much of that bass would be changed with the foam, the regular foam, 
actually in this uh, headphone. I don't know how that would affect the bass. So again, I'm judging this without the foam. So my results may vary a little bit from yours. All right, imaging and soundstage. Imaging, tack sharp, super great. Um, doesn't really have any significant dead points. I think it's like perhaps a little bit, um, it, it's not as round as like an Alex or a Utopia, for example, but it is kind of more in front of you, a little bit weaker on the sides or on at 45 degrees and then really good at 90 degrees. Okay, so Soundsage is okay. Like it's really just okay, it's not great. Um, I think for to have truly great imaging and Soundsage, it really needs to be able to be really, really close to you in terms of the really finite tight points and really, really wide. This has the really, really wide portion, but it's not capable of seeming super intimate, which for me was kind of a little bit disappointing, but other people, especially people who like that 4XX sound signature, that's kind of, it's really wide, but it can't quite get as close as something like a, a 6XX again, to bring up that for an example. Uh, those are a very intimate pair of headphones. These, the HU6s, are not. Uh, they're, they're kind of wide, they stay wide. Now, for genre recommendations, this actually makes it very good for orchestral music, um, very big sounds. Uh, soundtracks to movies are usually awesome. Now, they're good for gaming, but I think if I were to recommend a headphone for gaming, it wouldn't be this one. Um, they're, they're decent, they're not great, or, or really even above the rest of the class. They're just kind of, they're good for gaming, I guess. That's just it, that's as simple as it is. Other genres I would recommend is like acoustical music. Um, country music was actually fairly good. Rock music was nice because of that bass development, uh, but you have to be careful with, uh, with certain types of rock bands because of that treble. Um, there's almost a little bit of a peak in the treble uh, where it gets a little too intense for me and depending on which instrument is playing, uh, certain drums can hit it in like a weird way to where it's kind of, kind of irritating to me at least. But overall country music was impressive, rock music was impressive, and uh, uh, acoustic and orchestral music was nice as well. You could play electronic music. Uh, the slightly V-shaped sound that it has is somewhat beneficial to that, although I think I'd probably recommend um, a little bit less of an, a treble intensive headphone while still maintaining good bass. So like an LCD2C for example would be great for for uh, electronic music if you're interested. And then another thing that I wanna add to these reviews, and I'd love feedback on this, uh, and maybe I'll eventually replace this with sound demos if I ever get around to to getting like a, a, a kind of a measuring kit. Uh, and that's basically the sound leak. Now these leak a lot. So here are a couple examples of this headphones sound leak and a couple of other headphones sound leak for comparison. Okay, so for this part, this is just me talking. The, the microphone is on the camera right now. It's about, I don't know, about maybe five feet away. Um, and just the talking is for the loudness reference. I'm gonna play these at uh, not any specific volume, just like normal listening volumes, and I'm using uh, copyright free music um, so that there's no issues there. So here we go. Uh, this is HD6. So this is. This is about normal. This would be loud listening. Not loud. Then loud. I don't really love these a whole lot. I think they're good, I think they're fun. I think that they're also in a very competitive space and when you're getting you know, 500 to $1,500, there's a lot of options in there that sound really, really awesome. And while very, very good and fun sounding and enjoyable to listen to for certain types of music for certain songs, I feel like they didn't really stand out enough in the crowd for me to say, hey, if you like this, get this. Like there always seems to be, no matter what like scenario I'm imagining getting questions about, there always seems to be a headphone that I would probably recommend over this one. And then of course there's the huge elephant in the room being the fact that you need just a ridiculous amplifier that I don't think a lot of people would would have or or 
or that I would recommend buying just to drive this headphone. Is it worth getting if you already have a really powerful amplifier? Um, uh, no, I think it, I think it does depend on what you're looking for, uh, for sure. And I get questions about, hey, I like this type of sound, I like this type of music. Uh, I get those types of questions all day and people asking what headphones do I recommend for them. And I can't really think of a set of circumstances that would make me land on this as a recommendation. So it's a good headphone. Yes, do I recommend over others uh, in the $500 to $1,500 category? No, um, I don't. So yeah, uh, <laughs> all right guys, I'll catch you later. Uh, thanks for watching. My name is Josh and I'm going to, uh, to leave now. So Links to everything are in the description down below. And oh, before you go, if you're still here, because I'm sure this is gonna be like a, a 15, 18 minute review probably, even though I'm trying to make them shorter, but that's not working. Uh, a quick message about my Patreon. All right guys, thanks again, bye. If my videos have helped you in any way, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help the channel a lot. You will receive early access to videos like this one and an exclusive Patreon only behind the scenes video monthly. Patreon also helps with shipping costs and feeding my coffee addiction so that I can get up at 6am to make videos like this one.